Hello everybody, aren't you lucky today because you are going to have a double dose of Ryan Connor. What? I know, some ladies would pay a lot of money for that, but <laughs> you're getting it all for free. Yeah, this is two Ryan Connor profiles. character profiles, one from episode 10 and one from episode 562, which we've just recorded, but we've smushed them all together for your listening pleasure. And at the, the end of this, there's nothing you won't know about Ryan Connor. Unless he's done some more stuff since we recorded this. <laughs> which I assume he will, but he never mind, we'll worry it. about that later. Anyway, here we go. Um, here's the 10 minute old Ryan Connor profile, followed by the somewhat longer, newer one. Enjoy. <laughs> okay, our character profile this week um, is Ryan Connor. Um, no, no, don't stop listening now. This will just be a short one. <laughs> he's been played by Ben Thompson, a um, uh, originally and uh currently uh, played by Sol Harris Harris he yeah, was what is that name that's the weirdest name i've heard Sol <laughs> Her- Harris i do not know he that was made up the character was born on the 14th of january uh, 1992 which was when uh, michelle was 16 um he first oh yeah a- she was pregnant when she was 15 yeah. yeah he first appeared on the 30th of august 2006 and he's been in uh, coming up to 300 episodes so far um when, when he was originally in it, he had helmet hair. He yeah. had one of these haircuts that the, these kids these days have, <laughs> which is where their hair is kind of like formed into this bizarre helmet that sort of swept to one side over their face. Yeah, very different now. He's, uh... I hate that haircut. Maybe it's the <laughs> same actor and he just cut his hair. <laughs> when um, Thompson got the part originally, he said, I can't say too much about Ryan and his storylines, but he's very mischievous. The character is not a bad lad but he's not a good lad either. Um, and when he was um, first in it, he was not long after he, en- after he entered the programme, he was caught vandalising the cabin by Norris, um, and Michelle made him help out there to try and pay for it. Um, then in 2007, he discovered that Sonny Dillon, who Michelle was briefly engaged to, was gay, and also seeing Sean. Um... Yeah, he stole <laughs> Sonny's car as revenge and went joyriding. Yeah. And his uncle Paul did not like that because um, he gave him a smack over it because his dad, Dean, had died in a car accident. Yeah, there seems to be a bit of a, a thing with the Connor family and car accidents because Paul later died in uh, in a car accident after he kidnapped um, Leanne. Um, and then Liam was obviously in his hit and run as well. So uh, stay away yeah. from cars if you're in that family. Yeah, exactly. Go over the tram. Um, his main storyline and the one that people remember, apart from the people that actually are on oh, the programme... Yeah. <laughs> It um, started in 2007 in December when um, he was stalked by a stranger. Ryan was yeah. stalked by this guy who knew his name. It turned out that it was his real dad. What? Yeah, Nick Neeson. Because there'd been a baby mix-up um, at the hospital. Um, and actually, Michelle's not no, Ryan's not mum at all. Not Ryan's mum, no. She never gave birth to him. No, she, she gave just got given to him gun- in the hospital. Yeah, and her actual son was brought up as Alex Neeson. Um, and uh, the, the truth came out um, with Alex's family when he had a blood test and it showed that his blood didn't match up with either no. his mum's or his dad's. So, yeah, yeah you would, uh, suspicions would be raised there. Yeah, so in January 2008, he went to go and see Alex. Ryan went to go and see Alex and they had a fight. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and uh, um, they, the... didn't, they basically decided it would all be much easier if they just stayed with the families they had. Yes, Already. but then Alex later approached Michelle in the Robers and introduced himself um, and to, to everybody there. And also he went to Maria and Liam's wedding and said, yeah, I'm actually the real uh, grandson here, or the, the son of Michelle. Um, and as the month went on, Ryan got more and more jealous. And ev- eventually Alex muscled his way into living with Michelle. He said, I don't want to live with um, my, my other mum and dad anymore. Can I live with you? And Michelle liked the idea of her actual son coming in. Um, in February 2008, Ryan moved in with Liam and Maria because he was fed up with uh, Alex living with, with him and his mum. But later on, he returned to Michelle's house um, after Alex left, um, which is basically when Michelle realised that things couldn't stay like this um, forever and she arranged for his other mum to take him back. My head's hurting a bit. This is a bit confusing. And it... Yeah, it's just basically all it means is that... Um... He, he's not really Michelle's son. He was raised as his son. But all this stuff about, oh, when you had me, when you, you gave birth to me, blah, 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 blah. Just t- they totally forgotten all of that. They're yeah, not bringing it, any of it up. When you're, when you're a sort of idiot um, kid like Ryan is, the first thing you would think of to say is, you're not my real mum. 
Yeah, but they seem to have forgotten it. That. It's pretty good that they've forgotten it because it was a totally storyline for dramatic it effect. Was it was really story, stupid. Um, it was very dramatic at the time, but it's one of those things that just overly complicates relationships and they don't bother following up with it, as we've seen. Yeah. Um, and then since then, there's not been much on the Ryan front. Um, in October 2008, was that was when Liam was killed at Tony Stagdu, um, and, and Ryan had the news broken to him. Um, in 2009, he began a relationship with Sean. Uh, this is before she started to. Uh, she was. A, she uh, realized, realized she, she was, was a lesbian. Yeah. Um, her Sean's dad sends her to Stockport to live with her mum, and when she comes back, she ends the relationship. Um, after Ryan had been sort of caught kissing Sophie because he thought that Sophie was interested in him again before he's we... such a catch because he's got helmet hair. Yeah, he uh, really draws the lesbians in. Yeah. Um, go on. So he left in 2010 to go to Glasgow to university and spent some time there with Kieran. Him. Yeah. Um, and then he came back in 2012. Different actor. As a totally new person because yeah. university changes you. Yeah, and he was a bad lad again. Yeah, he's been kicked out of university. Um, he set fire to the curtain at number 13 with a cigarette. He doesn't smoke now, no. so what's happened to that I don't know <laughs> because you can't just stop smoking. Um, he fakes a fall at the factory. That was quite hilarious. Yeah, he sort of like threw himself all over factory. the place and said, well, I'm suing you, I'm sorry, I can't, I've got a bad back. Yeah. Um, I can't I can't work anymore. And then there was the whole drug storyline that seems to have also pretty much stopped. He's quite, you have to admit, the, the lad is good at stopping bad habits. Tracy's a bad habit and he can't stop that. Well, who knows what will happen in the future, but he, um, yeah, so that's uh, Ryan. Yeah, I find He's his character right very prat. boring. He's a bit of a prat. He's, he has got no charisma. No. And, and the, he's a little git. Yeah. I, I, I hope he's not in it for long. Really, all this or stuff. Or maybe he'll change. I don't know. He came back being being horrible and manipulative, but the tables have been completely turned on him because he didn't see Tracy coming at all, mm. and she's just wrapping him around her little finger. It'd be nice if he discovers what Tracy's been up to and then turns his manipulation powers on her. Mm. To me, he's it just been then. somebody who's been recast with a with a hunky young actor who looks older than he should be, like just... Tommy. And he's, he's not same. really doesn't really offer anything. Is he the same, supposed to be the same age as Sophie? Oh, I think so. Because they looks... do not look like no. they were. No, no, the same age. <laughs> anyway, that's Ryan. That's Somebody what we just... think of Ryan. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the actor's lovely. But we love. I don't... Yeah, the actor's lovely. <laughs> so I sorry I took the mic out of your name. <laughs> sure, it's short for something like really amazing, like Solomon or something. It might be. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to our bonus episode for this week. We're doing a character profile, current character, one we've already profiled before, a long time ago, but it's time to revisit. Who is it? It's Ryan Connor. I knew it. Everyone loves Ryan Connor. I love Ryan Connor. I think a lot of people He's do now. On me. They, well, yeah, the last time we profiled Ryan was back in episode 10 of the podcast. So this was so like autumn 2012. Up. Yeah, and uh, you know what our character profiles are like back then. Well, if you're listening to this on YouTube now, we'll probably just pop that on the beginning of it so you can compare. But um, I just wanted, I, I listened to it the other day and I wanted to run down some of the things we said about him because, yeah, we weren't too. Um, Enamoured. No, by, by Ryan back in the day. But he, yeah, yeah, he was a different person back then, quite literally. Um, and he, um, there's God, I'll tell you what, I would really love to pass the role of, of my life on to another actor just for a few years so I can go and relax and have some time off being yeah. me well, so you, I'm you, kind of bored of it now you want, you want a head swat do you yeah love do you, it. you get to be um, swapped into someone with like rippling muscles and uh, yeah and big whatever. rock hard abs yeah well, there, well there's Brian Prescott for you because... I wonder if Gillian Michaels is up for the <laughs> well um, the, the actor who plays him back in the last time we profiled him 10 years ago was uh, was Sol Harris and um, he, he played Ryan he ended up doing him for a couple of years and then obviously he went off for a bit which we'll, we'll talk about doing in a minute for a couple of years I'm not going to comment on that okay and um and, and then ryan prescott arrived in in 2018 and he's been there ever since so we thought it was about time that we did one of our character What's profile that, revisits yeah, yeah he's been he's been at five years on the show Good now and uh, he's, he's been up to all sorts that we're gonna reminisce on today but yeah the the, the original character profile of him was quite funny because we literally started off the profile saying no no don't stop listening now this is a short one because we kind of just kind of assumed that nobody really wanted to hear about ryan connor but we were going to do him anyway well his biggest story of the character was the, the 
baby swap. Yes. But was that even Sol Harris's? No, line? that was the original run. I can't. I'm sorry, I can't remember what the actor was called who played him. Um, but, oh, it's gone um, in my head. But yeah, he he played the original Ryan, and then we learned about him being swapped with. Ali slash Alex, it's all very confusing, as a baby. And we, I think we, we were joking on the character profile about, well, I'm glad they don't ever really bring this up because it's it's just a bit silly and confusing. But um, yeah, he, he Ryan, when we previewed him last, had been in around 300 episodes. Um, and we kind of agreed that he was not a bad lad, not a good lad either. I think that's probably fairly accurate to how yeah. he is now, do you think? I'd say he's probably more of a good lad now, but he can certainly be um, tempted to the dark side, as we saw last year with the uh, the robbery at the Bistro. I just um, want to quickly say, so he yeah. was played by Ben Thompson oh, yeah, from yeah, 2006 right. to 2010, and then um, Steve Frost, the producer, reintroduced, it, reintroduced him in 2012 with Sol Harris, and then Harris quit the role the next year, and then Ryan was... Brian Prescott replaced him on the 2nd of October. No, he left on the 2nd of October and came back on the f- in 2013. And yes, came that, back was in a, February, that was a 2013. nice birthday present for you when the uh, the second Ryan Connor left, wasn't it? I don't it? remember how he well, left. Here's, here's a fact for you because oh. I found this out the other day. The day that the, that the middle Ryan Connor left, that 2nd of October, was also the first appearance of Pat Phelan. Wow. So that was quite a good swap, I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> Swapping out middle Ryan Connor for, for Pat Freeland. I mean, who's, who's going to say no to that? Um, we made a joke about there being a thing with the Connors and car accidents and saying stay away from cars if you're in that family because of certain stories that Ryan had had up to that point. He'd, um, and, and that's quite funny because when he came back to it, his, the, the big story was the car accident that he got into with Michelle and Ali and, and Ronan and everything like that. Um, we talked about it being a bit confusing with about who raised who we talked about the baby swap storyline that had been kind of forgotten about and and agreed that it was pretty good that it had been forgotten about because it was pretty stupid and I think still looking back at it now and the fact that so Michelle Connor gave birth to Ali didn't she yeah but she there was raised a baby she Ryan. raised Ryan because of a baby swap in the hospital and it wasn't until yeah the early 2000s that this all came to light do these things really happen? I, I don't really know. Well, yeah, they ha- yeah they have happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you say only in a soap, but um... now I just want to point out something that we we haven't. I don't know if you've noticed this, but the character of Ryan Connor has been reintroduced three times by three different producers. Yeah. So he was originally introduced by Steve Frost, then Phil Collinson brought him back in two thousand and twelve, and then Kate Oates brought him back in two thousand and eighteen. Right now. Do you think that there's something intrinsic about each incarnation of the character that kind of reflects the different um, approaches of the of the producers there? Well, the original Ron Connor helmet hair, as we refer to him back in the uh, in the original character profile, was. He's just kind of a, a grumpy kind of teen, wasn't he? He yeah. was there to be like, oh, oh, you're not my real mum. Literally, yeah, in that sense. And then the middle Ryan Connor was all about, look at me, I'm so handsome, all the girls are going to be falling at my feet. Bit of a bad lad as well. I think when he came into it, he set um, number 13 on fire by smoking. And I, I think he never smoked again, so he's pretty good at dropping habits. Well, that's the same there. thing that happened to Ken Barlow. Yeah, he set exactly. fire to the house with his be- kids, at, not because he was smoking, but because no, he went out for cigarettes, some cigarettes. Yeah. So. Um, so, so he was, he was lit. Or well, we we referred to him as being very boring, a bit of a prat with no charisma and a little git. Um, and we said we hope we he's not in it for long. So we <laughs> really weren't. Imp- he was one of these characters <laughs> that was really just seen Sorry. to be in there as a ladies' man and to to get Ugh. and and, and the, the middle Ryan Connor as well, Souls Ryan. When he was introduced, it was. I, can't, I think it was at the same time oh, as really? um, Rob Donovan as well. And there was yeah. a promo shoot that they did with them um, in a boxing ring with, with very little in the way of upper bodily um, clothing on. And it literally was just like, hey, ladies, look at this! these new guys that are coming on to Corrie. You want to watch now, don't you? And, and it didn't no. feel like the middle character really progressed much on for that. We, we compared him to Tommy Duckworth, who was another, you know, hunky actor, looked a bit older than he should be and, and really didn't offer anything to the show. And, and and when we were recording this, I think probably that was just about when Tommy had just left the show or not long after um, Chris Fountain um, had to leave the show. We did, though, at least say, we're sure the actor's lovely. And uh, as far as I know, Sol Harris is a lovely guy. And he's still active on Twitter. Well, he posted something two and a half year, uh, year and a half ago if that still counts as active but yeah he's, he's still in the biz and everything but um, I definitely think that there wouldn't be very many people who would disagree 
that Ryan right. Connor, the current, yeah, is by far the best one. Yeah, I I actually think I don't mind Ryan now. I mean, it's difficult to like him a lot because he's not in the show that much. And, no, um, he's really he's, he's definitely feckless. I call him feckless for sure. Yeah, in in a fun way. You, you're right about the fact that he's not been in it much. Now back then I said he'd been just over three hundred. Now he's been in around seven hundred and twenty odd episodes. Um, and but he yeah he's never he's never made it like into the top twenty character account or anything. Um, he he started off uh, last year. Um, he was the seventy. No, sorry, the the first year. I'm not, I've, I've, my notes don't well, even make it, sense. Well, he, he was at number 72 uh, in yeah, character appearances. Yeah, 43 episodes in appearances. 2022. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Sorry, yeah, they're right. Last year, 72 most commonly featured character, so nowhere. And then the year before that, 2021, he was in 42nd position. And, and, and I think the highest he got was in maybe the mid-20s in his first year where they did actually have a story for him. I think when Kate Oates brought him in, she was the very... mid-20s? What does when, that mean? No, mid twenty twenty. No, um, I don't know what. Oh, the mid-20s in char- character appearance count. He you was said the he's 20- never m- no, he, made it no, to the I top said, 20? No he, no, he wasn't in the top 20. He was 20-something. In the oh. first year he came into it. But I think that was when Kate Oates had this big vision for um, expanding the Connor uh, clan further. Boo. And let's bring back uh, let's bring back <laughs> Ryan and have this huge drug storyline with him and everything. She, and then it felt like almost once that story was over, they ran out of steam with what to do with him. And it's a real shame because I think he's a really great actor and he's he's a lot of fun, isn't he? Ryan Prescott. But, yeah, and, and he still is, you know, um, a bit of a prat. But I do think he's got charisma now, and I, that that Sol Harris was lacking, in my opinion. But in then I role, don't think I'm the intended audience for Sol Harris's yeah. Ryan Connor. In that role, you know, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that he doesn't. He can no, I mean a different role. The the thing the thing is the difference is as I said earlier, Ryan Prescott is also like massively ripped and he's like a real gym guy and Who? everything. Ryan Prescott, Ryan Prescott is. But, don't want to know. But but they don't. That's not, and we don't need him. That's not a thing about him on the show. He's himself. had a few topless scenes, but he's not there to go he's have all totty. the ladies. He's not. He's not totty. I don't think he's. Sorry, Ryan Prescott, if you're listening. No, well, <laughs> there's a difference between just keeping it to yourself with dignity. Yeah, he does. And, he absolutely uh, keeps it to himself. And being forced to flaunt your 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 abs. I I I, I mean I, I'd head swap with him any day. But yeah, he's he that you're right. He's he's not there as a flaunter. So um, I don't like the flaunters. Look, they should yeah. leave me alone. He, even though we're still complaining that he hasn't been in it much, he has at least become the 88th most featured character ever on the show. So that's something. Well, that's he's in the top hundred. Isn't it? Yeah, all three Ryans are combined, making the 88th most featured character. And I would have never expected him to have broken the top hundred. So he's he's just just ahead. So he's got a few more appearances than uh, than Gemma has, than Dennis Tanner did, than uh, Becky McDonald did, um, and he's he's just behind Faye, Billy, and uh, and Derek Wilton as well. So depending on how well Billy and Faye, how much they appear this year, it could be that um, Ryan overtakes them. And, and I think he probably will overtake Derek Wilton. Might fair to say fairly soon. Unless yeah. they recast him. So um, let's remind ourselves. <laughs> we'd been talking last time. I have no ten... memory of Sol Harris. As... There, there he is. You've got a picture of him right yeah, in front of you. as Ryan at all. I don't remember. I don't... I can't picture... And it's like they're three different people. Yeah. They really they really are three separate characters. Yeah. The, I mean, the, 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 first, the first Ryan was just kind of normal teenager with... You know, early two thousands hair. I have to say, um, yeah, Lego hair. Yeah, you know, we saw the progression of teenagers' hair during the Harry Potter movies. Well, Ben Thompson playing Ryan Connor was was definitely in the, on the same level as them. But um, yeah, he anyway. So we'd, we'd last been talking about the fact that he was in a relationship with Tracy. And this is Sol Harris's Sol Harris's Ryan. Ryan. This in is still the end of yes. Yeah. Um, Tracy was basically just wanting to annoy Michelle because she Michelle was with Steve at this point. Tracy obviously had a bit of a thing for Steve and she just wanted to wind Ryan's mum up by going out yeah. with him. Um, and she Fake even, mum. Yeah, exactly. She, she pretends to be pregnant with Ryan's baby and um, Steve then says, Ryan, well, I think you'd better propose to her, you know. He knew that she wouldn't accept. Steve but he, knew. Steve knew, but he just wanted to stir things up even more. Um, and then Tracy ended up telling Ryan that she's lost the baby. Ryan realises she was never pregnant to begin with and ends it with her. 
So um, yeah, not very long lasting or a strong founded relationship in the slightest. So he takes his mind off the breakup by taking Sophie, remember her, when's she gonna come back? Sophie Webster to a club in town. I don't know whether you remember this. I but really yeah. remember this, but I can't remember his face at all. It's so funny, yeah. <laughs> so he ends up taking cocaine because as, as we've said before, he, he had a bit of a drugs problem. He ended up playing chicken on the road afterwards. Um, and then Sophie kind of rushes into the road to try and stop him. She ends up getting hit by a car herself and that's what led her, you know, yep. into that long period of physiotherapy. In comes Jenna, Jenna. exactly. <laughs> so, um, whoops there. So that's, that was basically Ryan till the end of the year. Um, he was going to be in it actually in the Christmas episodes, but his scenes had to be rewritten because he turned up to work one day apparently with a black eye that he'd earned during a friendly football match. And I didn't know any more details apart from this. Like, did he just fall over? Or did somebody on the opposing team get a little bit angry? It's not very friendly then, is it? It's not. That's the funny thing, isn't it? Black Eye Joe in a friendly football match. So they don't add up there. But anyway, so he gets to work, goes straight to makeup and says, cover this up. I've got some scenes to shoot. Put, put something on to cover this. And then we're sent to filming. He spends the day filming his Christmas scenes. When it comes through on the video it's really, really obvious that he's got makeup covering a big black eye. So he was sent home and then they had to redo all his scenes again with somebody else. So um, it probably didn't go too down too well with uh, with the higher-ups then. He should have just run only in one direction. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly, or just... Um... Or just have, have somebody throw the ball in his face at the beginning of the scene. And yeah. then he explains why he's got a black eye. Or, or he can say that he can wear an eye patch and he say he got it out of a Christmas cracker. Yeah, and he just loves it because that's the sort of quirky, fun guy that he is. <laughs> um, so that was the end of 2012. And then we had 2013 when we were very pleased to hear that he wasn't going to be in it for much longer. So Gemma, do you want to do a quick synopsis about the few things he got up to in 2013? Well, he became the manager of Prima Donna and then he started an affair with Katie Armstrong. Yes. And Katie is obviously the mum of Joseph. Yes, and obviously. she's dead now. Now dead, also in a car accident. Ryan really is the... Uh, Bad luck. The, 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 yeah, the, the, the death's kiss. So um, Katie was seeing Chesney at the time, but she's also boinking Ryan on Katie. the side. And uh, they're discovered in the back of a van together and Chesney dumps Katie. Uh, but she and Ryan continue to be together but then in July she dumps him she finds him flirting with another woman at a bar and um, he says oh I need it's because she's a club promoter and um, I'm trying to get a job as a yeah, DJ as a DJ in, in Ibiza I think and um, Katie's like uh, she, she's just like well take, take me home then I'm, I'm really mad at you let's go home and he's, he's like no he, well, he, he kind of hesitates he's like should I or should I stay with this other person and she's like well I'm done with you then done with you October, he's jobless, and Steve convinces him to go to Ibiza to be a DJ to try and make something of his life. And um, his final episode is the 2nd of October, and as you said already, that is when Phelan arrived. Now, this was really, I think, developing um, Ryan as a bit of a himbo. You reckon? Like flirting and uh, tr- trying to be a DJ and, and things. Yeah, and... you're right. See, the, his his previous incarnation, the Ben Thompson one, I don't remember. I mean, there was a group of teenagers that I'm kind of picturing that used to hang around. I don't know, was it him? And, and they're just, a, 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 just gem, general teenagers. Um, maybe there was Sophie. Maybe there's some other friends at school. And I think he... You know, there were some girls around, but it was definitely, you're right, the the Sol Harris one that was more of the I can have any woman I want sort of face. Yeah, now he left He left the show, um, he, he said he'd miss working with Kim Marsh. And he also talked about how he got abuse, I guess online abuse, about from fans about how Ryan treated Katie. <laughs> yeah, but he was... also was voted 38th in Attitude's Top 100 Hottest oh. Men poll. Well, that's... Every cloud, eh? I know, yeah, so he... Where's Ryan Prescott in that? Do they still do the hottest men poll, or is that a bit outdated now? Has it gone the way of the uh, the sexiest soap actor award at the Soap Awards, I think awards, we're all I just wonder? supposed... It's like this weird thing where we're not supposed... To, we're supposed to pretend that people don't um, care about how attractive other people are. So you don't get awarded for it, but you still just don't get a job if you're not hot. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> so, yeah, Sol's gone on and done... Um, he, 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 I, I'm not sure what he's been up to. When he left... He said he wanted to go and do some big dramas like Downton Abbey, for example. Obviously, big well, at the time. He definitely could have been, um, could have played the role that, uh, you know who I mean. Yeah, Liam Barrington Connor played. Uh, yeah, what was his name? name? I can't remember. Somebody. Uh, Thomas. Yeah, yeah, 
the the, the sneaky uh, sneaky butler. Sneaky butler. <laughs> Yeah, he, he could have done, but alas, he didn't. In fact, he has no more TV credits to his name. But he has been a few in a few films. He's been in a short film, and he's done some voiceover work. He was in um, like a video game, I, I think. Um, so that's I, 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 I don't really know much about what he's been up to, but at least it's more than Ben Thompson, the original Ryan, because after he left Coronation Street in whenever it was, when, when, when did the first 2012. one? 2012. Oh, the first one? Yeah. Um... Uh, I can tell oh, you so, if you oh, move your Anyway, hands. yeah, he uh, he's he's got no more IMDb so, credits. So uh, Ben Thompson was in it from 2006 to 2010. Yeah, so since 2010. And then Saul Harris um, was 2012 to 2013. You. Yeah, Ben, I'm not sure what he's been getting up to. So um, I've got an interesting fact for you, Gemma. Ryan this is just for you. Prescott is the longest serving. Yes, 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 indeed. Yeah. And the best, well deserved. So um, Saul, on, I was tell saying, me an interesting fact. Well, this this was just one of what I got off Saul's. Um, IMDb page. He was in a program called The Gemma Factor before he was in Coronation Street. So uh, one can only wonder it. what that's about. I really want to know more about this. I don't the think it's about the you. Gemma Factor. Yeah, sounds is it? great. Yeah, right. So 2018, um, in February that year, it was revealed by Kate Oates that Ryan Connor would be back. Um, there was um, the, around that time, um, Ali, his brother. Fake. No, well, not brother. That's what you call them brothers, but they're not, are they? The the child he was swapped with. He'd already come back earlier that year, or he was just about to. So so she had planned to bring them both back roughly at the same time. So it was in February, it was announced that he was coming back. Ryan Prescott was announced as the actor who would be playing him in late March. Um, and Ryan, and I think he might have told me this when I interviewed him for the podcast uh, that one time, he auditioned for two other Coronation Street roles in the past, and I always love hearing about this. Uh, like how... Uh, like, uh, Joe Froggart, hadn't she auditioned to play one of the Battersby's or something like yes, that? Or, or, right. or some of the Battersby's was arranged, auditioned to play Zoe, I can't remember. But anyway, um, yeah, he, he'd he auditioned to play um, Lee Mayhew, so Billy's druggy brother, oh. and um, and Dr Ali Neeson as well. <laughs> All three of which, um, at some point in their lives, had drugs problems, but he finally got one um, with Ryan. And um, the, the call to play Ryan came four months after the Ali auditions didn't go anywhere, they just got back in touch with him and said, look, we, we thought you were great. Um, we've got this other character coming else? up. You want, you want to play them? Yeah, so um, although I didn't have any a clue who he was when he started off in Coronation Street, Emmerdale fans may have recognised him as playing um, Flynn Buchanan in Emmerdale. That's a, that's a soap name. Do you reckon? Flynn Buchanan. Well, it's certainly, it was a soap name for seven episodes in 2011. They wasted that name but, on um, seven episodes. I know, I know. But he'd also been in, uh, in Holby, he'd been in Doctors, Casualty, you know, the standards. Um, and also in a film in 2014 called Vampire Academy. Was he, do you reckon he was a vampire? I don't know, but I'd quite like to watch that because <sighs> we do like our horror films, don't we? I don't think, it sound, doesn't sound like a horror film to me. Well, Kate... Sounds like a comedy. <laughs> a, a teen kind of vampire, vampire -y comedy. You look that up. Kate Oates, when um, Ryan Prescott's um, casting was announced, said, I love the whole Ryan and Ali dynamic. Ryan's an Ibiza club DJ and Ali is a doctor. Very serious and possibly a little bit darker. It's interesting to see how they fit in with Michelle. I think they're going to cause her a lot of trouble, which is great for Kim. She plays it well. Um, by that, I guess yeah. she mean Kim Probably Marsh is army. very good at uh, crying, which I think we can all agree with. She uh, she was certainly a bit of a Mardi Mare, that character, wasn't she? Do you want me she? to read you a, a little bit about Go on then, Vampire, Vampire Academy. Academy. Any Ryan this Prescott from... fans who haven't seen this? This is from... <laughs> <laughs> This is from IMDb. It sounds like a, this sounds like a really scary film. Go on. Rose Hathaway is a dampier, half human, half vampire, a guardian of the Marai, peaceful mortal vampires living discreetly within our world. Her calling is to protect the Marai from bloodthirsty immortal vampires, the Strigoi. Wow, cool. That sounds really exciting. I hope that um, an amazing film like that doesn't get a sequel and, and woos Ryan back well, to it. Well, you would have no have choice have but to join them. It had Gabriel Byrne in it. That's pretty... Right. Anyway. And Jolie Rich. This is what Ryan has done in his current incarnation, Gemma. Do you remember this, listeners? Everyone who's saying that Ryan Prescott's not done much because oh, it was actually... On. Sorry. Sorry, Michael, you know I hadn't finished because I was still scrolling. Okay. I don't think Ryan Prescott had a massive role because oh. his... His ne the name of his character is Novice Punk Nick. So, <laughs> I still kind of want to watch it. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, he came back with a really big story. This is something that Kate Oakes had put together. Um, he, he, it was for Michelle's wedding um, to, to Robert. 
Um, although he he did have to be collected from the airport after getting drunk with a bunch of lads that he met on the plane. So even from his first episode there, it was established that he was a bit of a bit of a no hoper and still needed well, I mean, to yeah, be. Getting getting so drunk you can't arrange your own transport home from mm. on a plane from Ibiza to England. Yeah, that's pretty drastic. See, I, I don't I don't see current Ryan. You know the the way the character has developed over five years doing anything like that necessarily yeah, but, that's but because I, you don't ha- you don't have your own wild youth to fall back on I don't I don't um but I, I I know that sometimes when they bring characters in they always like to have some kind of oh like you know when Glenda came in it last yeah. year and it's like oh Glenda's here oh now she she's has to take over hat. she's got a little hat and now she has to take <laughs> over the funeral because George is as as over as, as fallen from asleep the, in, from the, the plane ride in the plane right the back of so um anyway so this was Ryan's introduction he goes to Robert Stagdo and they get on okay although Ryan admits to Michelle and he's a very astute lad, this Ryan, yeah, that, that that Robert seems a bit boring. Wow. So, yeah, he got his number straight away. Can't disagree with you there, Ryan. Um, he nearly misses the wedding, though, because he ends up spending the night in some floozy's house and Robert has to go and extract him the next day. <laughs> Robert then gets a black eye from her ex that turns up. So when Robert... He's at and, the wedding. Yeah, so when, when the wedding takes place, um, yeah, Robert's got a black eye. Oh, how come he's allowed to go to a wedding with a black eye, but... Ryan wasn't allowed to have a football match at Christmas. Very true, very true. Ah, double standard. Absolutely double standard, you're absolutely (laughs) right. So Ryan decides to stay on in Coronation Street for a bit. If if Weatherfield back then was anything like it is now, it's probably because of uh, all the drugs that were there. That's lovely. Um, So so then Ali, Alex as was, this, this just makes things more confusing, doesn't it? So Alex... Slash Ali, mm-hmm. the person that Michelle gave birth to. Yep. Yes, I'm right. Yep, the but didn't bring up, was called Alex when he was in Coronation Street first. But when they brought him back, they couldn't call him Alex because of Alex who works in the cafe. So they had to say that his name is Ali. So it's just very they should have just changed Alex's cafe name, Alex's cafe name, to something else because it's rude. Because yeah. Ale- Alex was first. I, I I need to look up to see if there's ever been any soaps that have had two characters in it with the same it, name at the same time. It we had that thi- we had that thing um, a few months ago where Steve and Stephen had yeah. their little scene outside yeah, the yeah. Uh, Rovers, didn't they? Which but is quite funny. I but... just want to say um, when a- Ali Alex changing his name to Ali uh, and really made me think. Um, he was trying to distance himself from all of his family drama and reinvent himself as, you know, Dr. Ali. And so it fits yeah. the character. He, he did, and I don't remember too much about it, but there was something when he came back about um, Wendy Neeson, his brought up mum, so Ryan's real mum, I think. Yeah. Because this kind of, they, they had had a bit of a spat and she, she appeared for another episode and then went off again, I don't remember. But yeah, maybe he just wanted to start a new life. Although I would say if I wanted to be a professional doctor, I might just... Um, professional doctor? Well, I might just go with Alexander. Yeah, Dr. Alexander I'd ra- I'd, Neeson. I'd rather, I'd ra- if I was going to the doctor, sorry, maybe this is prejudice of me, yeah, I'd rather yeah. go to see Dr. Alexander Neeson than Dr. Ali Neeson. I know, Dr. Ali Neeson's like, Got my standards. I, I don't know, it could just be cancer. <laughs> I'll Google it, let me see. Oh my God, I think you're going to die. Well, Ryan and Ali end up clashing um, for the first few months of their relationship because... Um, Alex is just getting to know Michelle, having come back into her life after not having seen her for a long time. Ryan... Get jealous. Get, got jealous because, yeah, well, she, because in, his, in his, his eyes, Michelle was his mum who brought him up. So, so there's a bit of butting heads there now, for a little bit. I really think that this was when the story about the baby swap came into its own, didn't it? <laughs> it just... because, because it was just a silly little... Um, dra- like a like an exclamation mark at the end of a chapter yeah um when it first happened and you know it was dramatic but it was silly it but was this, but this kind of really brought a lot of tension mm. into this relationship and actually ali and, and ryan's kind of relationship is one of the most interesting ones in it was and he, I, I i was you know by the time ali left a couple of years ago i wasn't particularly sad to say goodbye to him but i did really enjoy that relationship the brotherly but not really brotherly relationship rivalry and, and, yeah jealousy you got, you got the, the druggy dj yeah. versus the okay druggy doctor but yeah it was, <laughs> it was a bit chalk and cheesish wasn't it i and thought it was I loved great it. Yeah. and w- do you remember all the um the fan yes. fiction that they, they had do. about them having an affair i don't know whether it was fan 
fiction, but there were just a lot of theories about whether honestly, Ryan and Ali would turn out to be gay and have feelings for each other. Oh, and, why not? Well, I think I because think they had to literally they had to Coronation Street had to deny that they said that this isn't going to happen. Stop. I mean, what Ryan Prescott <laughs> said about that was he said no, that's totally fabricated. I don't know who came up with that. There's a lot to play with within the relationship and the dynamics between both of them, but it's definitely more of a sibling rivalry going on through to a brotherly friendship, and it could go either way. Two guys in their late twenties that have always been interested in girls. It'd just be a little far-fetched if something happened between them. And it's important as far as storylines go that we don't clutch at ideas. So uh, um, I don't uh, tell somebody, that to Rana. <laughs> somebody needs to inform some of the people that come up. <laughs> I, I'm not. glad they didn't go that I, way. I'm going to hold my hand didn't. up here. I was fully on board with it. I, <laughs> I think a lot of. I don't think you were the only, only one. Only because I liked the cat among the pigeons um, storyline. I think. I mean, I would have appreciated the fact that it probably would have made Michelle's head explode. It would have been fantastic. I'm sorry, it would have been fantastic. And it would have got everybody talking and everyone would have been outraged. Yeah, I mean, they had a... See, it's not incest, is it? And they it had, isn't. They, had they didn't that... even know each other. Yeah, they, they never had... knew each other until they were teenage no, boys. No, And then they went and their separate ways after not very long. Well, they also had a not really incest story with Frankie and Jamie Baldwin, yeah. didn't they? Where his stepmum and he... Um, got together I just think it'd be worth it just for all the outrage yeah. that you get on Twitter and do you remember when, how um, angry people do you remember get? when Amy got pregnant a few years ago and there was a few characters are saying oh is it Simon who's yeah. done it so they've they've got as far as I ever want them to go with incest correlations to it, I have to say. <laughs> it's not, not incest like, no it's not it's not it's like but the most it's like the, it's scandalous headline it scandalous. material yeah. it's for people who don't really know the show well enough for them to be scandalised and then go oh okay when they realise that they're not actually related. Anyway, anyway, anyway. so um, they he, he he ends up staying at, uh, on Weatherfield. Ryan does. We're back to Ryan. Ryan character profile. He gets a job in Gary's yard. That lasts all of five minutes. And then he's hired at the bistro. Um, and I, I rem- I've got vivid memories. Of that. I was reading about this the other day. There was a scene where Daniel and Kate, who also worked at the bistro at the time, dupe Ryan into taking air samples. Do you remember this? Says no. so you've got to take a cup and a so and, and go around oh, collecting God. air, <laughs> oh my God. just so that they can go out to the pub. And he looks after the bistro. Um, unwittingly, though, he ends up locking Michelle and Robert in the sex freezer, and uh, we all remember uh, that very fondly. I'm sure. I just want to point out that. Um... If I was going to point at one of these, Ryan or Ali, as being Michelle's actual biological son, it wouldn't be Ali. Why? Because Ryan, bless him, he's not very bright, is he? And I don't think Michelle was ever that bright. Oh, I don't know. I don't... Who? What do you mean? He took air samples. No, I'm saying I don't think Michelle was unbright. Really? I don't know. I missed her degree in chemical engineering. <laughs> oh, she, yeah, yeah. Cunning, haven't seen maybe. her Mensa test results, have we? Yeah, yeah. She's, she's. I'd say she was. I wouldn't she, say she was she's thick, fox, but she's, she's fox smart. I'd say she's uh, she's average. <laughs> but you know, she ended I up marrying I'm, Steve McDonald, so she exactly. can't be that smart. I suppose. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, Doctor Ali, you got to be intelligent to be a doctor. So yes. is it is nature versus He'd probably nurture, beat her it? in an IQ test. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, <laughs> he um, <laughs> so he he ends up getting close with Bethany um, and starts to make out with her. However, this then brought back memories of Bethany's grooming ordeal. So he starts getting a bit close to her. And and at the time, she was just coming through that awful ordeal she went through with uh, Nathan, was it, the previous year. She runs off, leaving him going, what what have I done? What have I said? Um, He chases after her for a bit, bumps into Sarah Louise, Bethany's mum, who slaps him round the face because she thinks that he's up to no good. He ends up bashing his head on the fall, has to go into hospital. Oh dear. Um, And while he's there, he takes, you know, because he's a bit of a chancer, is Ryan. He ends up blackmailing Sarah for £800 and saying, I won't tell anyone that you're the one that caused me to have this head injury if you give me this £800. Because he, he basically he wanted to go back to Ibiza at this point and this would be the perfect um, perfect starting offing sort of money for that. Um, but um, yeah, cause he, he'd, he thought that Michelle was rejecting him, um, but she ends up convincing him, no, just 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 go to Ibiza for a little bit, then come back here. I still, I still love you. So um, then we had something that I wish they'd done an awful lot more with Ryan and Ali, which is the maybe one episode long caper where Ali is told by Ryan that when he was younger, he invested in Whipcoin. 
I love whip coin. I, 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 yeah, I, I, yeah, the mining for whip coin every weekend, yeah. aren't you? It's yeah. one of those things where you look back on your life and go, if only I'd invested in Google and whip coin. I mean, Voggle. Voggle and, <laughs> and whip coin. And whip coin yeah. <laughs> I can just imagine somebody mining for whip coin with the whip just slashing away at something. Do you something. think of the, the little animation of a tiny like Indiana Jones yeah. bit? Thing. So anyway, so he, he's got this digital currency, which he reckons by now is actually probably worth £250,000, I've just realised. Oh, how could I forget that? Well, just as well as he forgot what his password for his Whip coin account was. But at least he knew that the password was written down in a book, and it was a football book. And the story of this one episode was Ali and Ryan just what, going... How was a football book? A book about football? Why does everybody It was want about Ryan book? Giggs or something. Well, it was it was Ryan's old book. He wrote down this Whipcoin password in it. And then the story went something like, when Michelle and Steve got together, Steve passed it on to Tim to read. Tim ends up giving it to Jeff to put on the hospital book trolley. Oh. Brian takes it from the hospital book trolley. He lends it to Kathy, and, and then <laughs> Kathy ends up throwing it out in the skip next to the prima donna or something like that. What, and the episode does. is just literally them trying to trace the path of this book. And it was a really funny comedy caper for these characters that up until this point hadn't really been the best Heavy of mates, bonding, but it was a really nice kind of bonding experience for them. I really like. I I remember enjoying that. Yeah, and and anyway, they they don't find the book, but don't, what do you know? Ryan eventually ends up remembering the password and um, far from the £250,000 he thought that he might be worth by this point it was actually £10,000 which is not to be sniffed at I suppose and um, I think that's what maybe I can't even remember what he did with it but anyway maybe he's forgotten about that at that point as well he probably just got so, bought some new decks the big story then of autumn of uh, 2018 was when Ryan's um, friend Cormac Truman old school friend is taken on at the bistro so Ryan is also working at the bistro at this point remember these two go out on a night out with Sophie and Bethany that ends up with Cormac overdosing overdosing, overdosing on drugs back at Michelle's flat oh, no. he ends up seizing on the floor oh, Michelle no. panics and is like well what do I so Ryan panics and what am I going to do oh I know my brother's a do- my fake not real brother is a doctor I'm going to phone him Dr. Ali pegs it over to the flat. He can't revive Cormac. And he's like, well, when's the ambulance coming? And my, oh, I said, oh, I haven't called an ambulance. I thought I'd just call you. And Ali's like, you idiot. He gets on the blower to the ambulance straight away. But when the para- paramedics arrive, nothing they can do. Cormac is pronounced dead. Not really Ryan's fault, but some might say that he could have done more if he'd been thinking straight to oh, well, increase his chances of survival. But... You know, he's the son of a massive criminal, Ronan Trona, Truman. So some Ronan might all, Tronan. Ronan Tronan. <laughs> um, so some might also say that thinning the numbers of the, the gangster population of Weatherfield oh, isn't such cruel. a bad thing. Sorry, Killing no, Damon off at the moment. Killing people their parents are evil. So um, the Connors immediately close ranks around this and convince Ali to lie about the timeline to make it look like Ryan didn't just stand there not really doing anything Well. um Cormac with frothing at the mouth on the floor. Doesn't work on Conan. Oh, he's Conan now. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Conan Ronan. Cormac's dad, Ronan, this massive criminal overlord, who ends up terrorising the family, chasing them in his car, which is a great episode because that was uh, Stephen Tracy's wedding as well. Um, Accident happens. He swerves off the road, impales himself on a fence post. And this is when Dr. Ali let him die. He... What did he do? he did he, he remove the fence post or did no did he not remove the fence he did whatever the one it was you're not supposed to do and basically I let honestly don't Ronan think there was bleed out a lot to be done in that situation maybe not but right I, I, in my head Doctor Ali is one of those other Coronation Street got away with murder characters which we're seeing an increasing frequency of in the past decade <clears throat> Toya. So Ryan himself during the fracas gets hit by a car. His life is hanging <laughs> I mean, in the balance there. for a bit, but <laughs> he's, he's all right in the end. He's, he's fine, he's fine. So Bethany and Ryan, towards the end of the year, they kind of get together, but they kind of don't. And at the time, viewers were saying, are, are they a thing? Are they just friends? Are they an item? Because, you know, Corey's not always so good at showing the continued adventures of a newly got together couple. They yeah. get together leave them for months and then have them falling out drama. Well, this was a case of, yeah, we don't really know what the status is for these two. Um, so, and that kind of bleeds into the next year as well. In the meantime, though, Ali and Ryan had fallen out 
um, over the whole druggy dead person on my floor incident, and Ryan is not too impressed to hear how Ali let Ronan die, nor that Michelle blames the whole affair on him letting Cormac die. So, um, yeah, a bit of tension between the Not Really Brothers at the end of 2018, and now I will pass on to you for 2019, Gemma. Well, he fizzles out. Him and Bethany's relationship just fizzles out at the beginning of 2019, but he does make up with Ali. Hooray! Uh, Michelle enlists. Um, yes, my notes don't make sense here. This is why I asked you to check my notes earlier. So she enlists Ryan to spy on Robert. When he starts acting suspiciously after the factory roof collapses. Yeah, do you remember? People thought that Robert was you know, a potential candidate for, um, for causing the factory roof collapse. So Robert finds out that he's he's um being spied being on. spied on and he's the chef, he's like the head chef and owner of the bistro at this point and he fires fires Ryan from the bistro and so um what happens now is Alia gives Ryan a job DJing at Speed Doll and they start flirting with each other but then Bethany's trying to build up the courage to, to ask Ryan out well no they they yeah yeah like i said it, well, it just really wasn't clear what the status was Bethany she she'd been she'd gone through this awful traumatic experience the previous year or two years I can't remember ago with with being groomed and everything and any time she got close to a guy as we saw with Ryan earlier um, just you know, a few minutes ago she would just freeze or, or or get scared or anything so she wanted to take things further with him but couldn't build herself up to do it but she does but she does yes. Um... You've written, after a pep talk from her mum, she takes him to bed, which sounds like the sort of pep yeah. talk that mum shouldn't be given. No, so Sarah Lou was like, yeah, you, you go, girl. You'll be fine. Just um, think, lie back and think of England. I'm, I'm sure that was part of... <laughs> I'm paraphrasing right, so, Sarah yeah. there, maybe. So he ends up getting a slap from Bethany when Ali tells her that he was flirting with Alia. Yes. Michelle's still a bit off about about Robert she's not quite sure so not sure whether he dropped a factory roof on uh, Rana's head or not um, but Ryan helps Robert plan a surprise proposal for Michelle in the bistro yes now meanwhile Alia is getting more and more suspicious of Jeff I remember him because he was suspected of stealing a necklace well he was just a, he was just just a very a dodgy guy wasn't he but yeah, yeah they, they, um, they, there was one time when Ali so not Ali, sorry, Ryan and Alia went out clubbing and they brought back some DJ friends, do you remember? And then um, they don't lock the back door. And, and there's and a shady Jeff, figure that Jeff comes in, steals, steals the, necklace. the necklace. and tries to pin it on Ryan's Yeah, yeah, I think, friends. yeah, it was but actually But they, they yeah. know it was him. Yeah, so Ryan's, th- Ryan this is kind Alia. of the beginning of Ryan and Alia teaming up against Jeff. And they get together, don't they, eventually, Ryan and Alia? They do. This year, after yes. a speed dog DJing sesh. Mm. <laughs> Tell you what they love on Corrie. I know we always make fun of them for doing fancy dress parties. They also seem to have DJs just turn up in restaurants far more frequently than you would ever really want them to. I know. I don't know life. whether I've ever been to a, a restaurant with a DJ, but I mean, I'll just I go guess... straight out again. Yeah. I can't uh, be doing with this. That just shows about the type of um, dining establishment that I frequent, I suppose. <laughs> what you're so high <laughs> I'm on a higher class. So like Pizza Hut, you know, they don't, <laughs> so, yeah. they don't have DJs. There. <laughs> <laughs> right, so um, right, yeah. String called hats. Oh, they called nothing. Sorry. <laughs> they keep uh, Ryan now has got a job keeping an eye on, on the furniture shop for Gary. Um, but he finds some money in a desk, and so he keeps it. It's six hundred quid. <laughs> still, still being a bit of a chancer, isn't he? Still a bit He's of a dodgy naughty. guy. Um, well, he wants the money because he wants to go to Copenhagen with with Alia, which I can highly recommend. I, I thought you would. Yeah, yeah, you love, do like Copenhagen, Copenhagen yeah. don't you? And Gary finds out and he says, well, you can pay me back with interest. Yeah, oh, this no. is all part of Gary being an evil loan shark and kind of a bit well, intimidating. It, yeah. Um, Ryan is shocked to discover Ali is having a seizure on the carpet in the flat. Yes. This, this was almost a year since the Cormac seizure incident, so it had a bit of a bit of flashbackery as well. He actually remembers to call nine 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 this yeah, time. Yeah, I guess it's yeah. because Ali's already unconscious, so yeah. he's like, "Oh no, what? What's the next step if yeah. Ali's not here? Why are you calling him Ali? Ali? <laughs> what is his name? Yeah, Ali. Ali. Is it like the Ardy and Addy thing? Or um, and Alia. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Ali admits. When he comes round, he's he says he's been hooked on diazepam for a year, and then Ryan tells Robert, and they make Ali have a, a they like we're gonna cure you of drugs by making you watch 
Titanic. I don't know. They, yeah, they, they have a, make they have a movie, movie night, night don't to try they? to get him through the cold turkey yeah. uh, sweats or whatever. I don't think it works. Oh no, it seems to work temporarily. Well, exactly. He's back on them again it doesn't later. Work. But... <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, Gary beats up Ryan in an alley <laughs> after he hasn't got the money back. I think this is the first time Gary successfully beat someone up. It's usually it was uh, the other way around, wasn't it? Gary was always on the receiving I end know, of but a I good, think I definitely think hammering. it in a fight that it, Gary that would rude. win. Yeah, yes, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. But I don't, you know, as I say, Ryan's got a bit of muscle on him. I know, but I, I think don't know whether Gary has. Gary's got cunning. Has he? Um, I suppose. I suppose if it was a, a, a he, he could outsmart him. Well, he beat him up in an alley. Yeah. Well, that's what happened. Um, Ryan has to sell He's his laptop happened. to uh, get the cash and he tells everybody that he was mugged but Adam and Sarah are like I don't think that's mm. what happened but all of this I remember at the time thinking he, he owed him what was it £600 odd, odd. And yeah I remember it, this it just he, got he, worse and worse it got worse it? and then he wasn't really appearing to try and save it he would go off and he'd be out buying drinks and everything. And I'm not saying that anybody could just easily lay their hands on £600 like this, although that is usually the case in Coronation Street. But there was a period of time when he wasn't really that, you know, motivated to, to, to get his debts paid off. Well, he certainly paid for it. Well, yeah, because he tells Ali about the fact... Ali, which way... Well, Ali, it's Ali, Ali. Like villains Ali. He tells Ali the truth and... <laughs> Oh, we only I will call somebody Alex Harley. <laughs> Sorry. Um, he eventually tells him the truth, which then Gary finds out about. And Gary's like, right, now you owe me double. <laughs> Oops. Then there's wedding dramas with Robert. And then... Uh, yeah, Robert gets dumped at the wedding. He then gets he gets shot, shot a week he later. Shot. He has it. Robert does. He's this is, this is Robert dead. Yeah. Yeah, all right. I can't remember every time someone gets shot on Coronation Street. You're right. It is quite a frequent Michelle leaves Weatherfield and she leaves Ryan. And Ryan um, offers Yasmin his support for some reason about something. About Jeff, maybe. About general Jeff. And she just mind her own business because this is when she was in denial about what was happening to her. Yes. Yeah, I, I did enjoy Ryan and Alia teaming up together, but, well, to take down Jeff, but it always felt like it was just. It was an Azir story that they occasionally let Ryan in. And and th- this is kind of what happened from this point onwards. Ryan was... He, ne- he never had his own story. He was just a bit of a side player in, in a lot of the other ones, really. But um, 2020 came around. Um, Gary um, ends up quitting his loan shark business because... Um, well, somebody fell off a helter-skelter and someone got shot outside the rovers kind of because of him. So that probably makes you think... And, and reevaluate your life choices. So um, he tells Ryan to go and visit all my clients, tell them their debt's cancelled. Also, Ryan at this point left the bistro after clashing with the new boss, Ray Boo. Crosby. Evil Ray. And he gets himself a job as Roman's, Roman's Rovers barman. And I think I really liked him in, in Rovers. This was yeah. at a period, I think, when... Well, partly because, of course, of course, COVID was coming on around there. And they, they didn't have a strong team behind the Rovers bar. Or there would be times when people wouldn't appear. Because you had the Gemma was there and, and, and Ryan was there. And, and, and Daisy hadn't come in. I think now in the Rovers, we got Glenda. And we got we got Gemma a bit. We got Daisy and, and Jenny, obviously. And there's, there's a really good team there. But I, I think, yeah, Ryan was maybe a missed opportunity. I'd like to see him go back there one day. So anyway... Um, he um, he gets a job in the Romans, like I said, um, and there's also a bit of drama going on with Dr. Ali at this point because he's been having it off with Maria behind Gary's back. So that's a bit Maria. awkward. Yeah, I know Maria. Well, I, well could, I could call you a word there, Maria. It doesn't but I won't. last long. No. So Gary finds out about this, and then Sharon. Sharon, who was the 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 Lone loan shark cat Sharon that we saw for Not... a little bit around Kelly's exit story last year, she tries to um to to drug Ali's drink with diazepam, uh, and then he gets all woozy, ca- uh, collapses during work one day. Doctor Gaddas ends up finding him, fires him for being back on the drugs again because Toya also knew that Ali was on the drugs, and, and eventually tells Gaddas, and uh, and yeah, that's it. He has a bit of a scrap with Gary, and then leaves the street. So that leaves. Ryan as being the sole representative, really, of the Connor clan. And we wondered at the time, how's, you know, is the character going to survive without his family around him? 
And at the moment, I'm still saying not really, but I really, really he's want to. Along. There's, there's so much that they could do he's with like him, but they're a, just not. Um, he's like a little, um, little spunky dog who's, you know, plucky little waif, an mm. orphan dog. He's the yeah. littlest Tobo. He just needs, he just needs a leg to hump. Tobo many times on mm. the show. So um, Ryan um, is just a bit more of a supporter in Alia and Jeff's storyline that year. Um, he even, I think he, I don't know whether he moved in or not, or whether, because when, when Jeff got stabbed in the neck by Yasmin, when he pushed her too far, he Jeff ends up going to hospital, Victim obviously, moment. for a bit, comes back, and Ryan <laughs> and Alia are there, kind of, they've changed the locks and everything, and they're, they're jeering at Jeff outside the house and Jeff's trying to put his key in the lock and Ryan's going, oh, jiggle it, Jeff, which is hilarious. You had to have been there. And um, anyway, then they eventually move into the bookies flat with Toya and Imran. So Alia uh, and Ryan. Alia and Ryan, Toya and, and Imran. Imran. And maybe Craig was there at some point, I yeah. think. So they're also responsible for um, bringing Elaine to the street. So Elaine Jones, Tim's mum, because they heard how Jeff was abusive to her too. They go and find her. Um, and say, look, you, you, you're the person, you, you're the key to, to taking down Jeff. But she soon checks herself into a psych ward after evil Jeff intimidates her and reminds her about, you know, you, you better watch it, lady. So Elaine was off, but at least um, the you know things had started to maybe unravel for evil Jeff, Jeffrey Metcalf. So they work together with Imran to find evidence that takes Jeff down. Then he falls off a roof. Chickens peck his corpse. There's a long story there. If you want to find out more, listen to the Jeff Metcalf um, character profile. It's a good one. Gemma, back to you. Well, I'll tell you. Do in tell 2021, me. It's a bit of a slow start to the year because all he does is catch that mouse that was loose in number six. That was yeah. when all... Elaine, was it Elaine, Elaine Yasmin, Yasmin, Yasmin and, and Kathy were, were living together like, at number six and there's a mouse on the loose and Ryan's brought in to save her and that's literally the most that they can think of to do with the character for the first six months of the year or so. Um, he does a bit of online D- DJ streaming, doesn't yeah. he? And yeah. um, Daisy... Um, a fan of the online streams. She, she he, he attracts her attention. Yeah. And he says, um, why don't... She says, why don't we do a mobile pub and DJ initiative. Yeah, the Rovers. It sounds so tiring, doesn't it? It sounds just tiring. Well, she, she came up with the idea for the Rovers and I um, don't know what happened with this idea after she suggested it because I don't think they do it anymore. But um, yeah, they have this little you know, pop-up bar thing and for, for the Rovers. It can go around being people's gardens for parties or whatever and then Ryan would come with it well, this was play the, the tunes. This was during COVID, wasn't it? Or it was kind of. Around. Yeah, yeah, it so. was... It was you know, starting to come out of it, really. So, sh- so um, there's a, there's a gig for Simon's 18th birthday party, and then after Banging this, gig, that this is when Daisy sets her sights on him. Yes. And Alia's like, "You're too stupid. You can't tell that she fancies you." And she also, uh, Alia's also not massively keen on the idea of her shiftless boyfriend thinking that he's going to become a famous DJ. Yeah, from he, he's a no mobile um, pub. He's no fat boy slim, is he? I mean. I don't want to be mean to him, but and I also don't know anything about DJing. But I, I would be on Alia's side here, and this was this was something that was never developed between Alia and Ryan, in that she's quite ambitious and he is not at all. No, and there was there was a clear source of conflict for it for them in a relationship. And normally Coronation Street flounders a bit to to create conflict between couples so they can have a bit of drama splitting them up but they have the perfect thing here and it never yeah, really he's just happy to kind of drift through life really developed. isn't he kind of bum around but um there was drama w- with him and daisy wasn't well, there yeah after because that. they get into the pub one evening and um he gets drunk and daisy is, she gets is she drunk. as drunk yeah i don't know um and she says look go back go back with your girlfriend or stay the night with me. Yeah, she, well, she, yeah, she says, you need to go back to your naggy girlfriend or have a night of passion with me. And uh, Strokes his leg. Yeah, and, and I think that wasn't actually uh, Charlie Jordan's hand on uh, Ryan Prescott's leg then, because as we say, it was COVID times. Well, I think that's brought his girlfriend in or something. Right, so so he wakes up half naked in her bed. Next day, cannot remember anything. <laughs> Daisy says she can't remember We've all been anything. there, eh, lads? Uh, no. <laughs> um, she chooses... The moment that Alia comes into the pub to talk about the fact that Ryan had been touching her up the night before and then they ended up in bed together yeah, to try to split Ryan and Alia up. And uh, it works because Alia calls her a tramp 
and dumps Ryan. Yes. But then Daisy tells Alia that they um, didn't actually sleep together. They just kissed and she put Ryan to bed. But Ryan, Alia's like, well, you know, still still not acceptable to that, me. That was, a, that was a really kind of Odd. Well, cringy, awkward sort of storyline. It was... The, the, the scenes I can remember quite vividly when, when Ryan's there all woozy and everything and Daisy being this minxy, s- minxy seductress, seductress and well, kind rapist. of a bit rapey, yeah. And well, it turned out, obviously, that she didn't do anything. She didn't go that far. But it was like, well, this is this is hard stuff. This was and pro- almost ruined Daisy's character. It really did. I mean, not that we particularly liked Daisy's character. It was a few months after that, I think, that we started becoming the, the Daisy fan boys and girls, that we are now. But this was just like, this, this have... character who came yeah. in, hated Johnny, tried to split him and uh, and Jenny up. Just That's literally all she did. And now she's here drugging our lovely Ryan. I hate this cow. And yeah. I don't know how she was able to, in such a short time period afterwards, completely change my opinion of her. But I, I don't think, and I really hope that they don't explore this side of Daisy again. I think they've got this the balance. Was, it's taken a few years, but they've got the balance with Daisy right just this right This was now. Daisy trying to do power move, wasn't it? Yeah. She couldn't she couldn't cope with the idea that Alia thought that she was better than she was. Mm. So she just totally mean girled her, stole her boyfriend yeah. and basically said, Yeah, I could have shagged him but I didn't want to. Yeah, and, and she and, wasn't um, really interested in him because I mean he he is a bit of a dope, isn't he? Yeah, well, I mean, this was incredibly problematic and very controversial, this storyline. Lots of people really pointed was. out how awful it, it was. And um, I'm glad that they cleared up that she didn't sleep with him, but I don't think that it was... <laughs> I think I would say that it's, you know, a, a part of Daisy's history that she would rather we forgot. Yeah. And maybe even Coronation Street would rather, although they did bring it up a few um, months ago when Ryan I mean, and Alia were trying to get back together and she's like, nope, not after what happened with Daisy. I mean, and how much can you say that it was actually assault? Because she took his clothes off. Yeah. And he didn't give her... Con- she didn't, he didn't consent to that. Well, no. And... <coughs> oh, excuse me. It's, it's, I mean, it's, is it as bad, I don't know, as the Daisy and Roy incident? Not Daisy, Tracy and Roy. My gosh, Daisy and Roy. Because well, Tracy ended up she she properly drugged Roy, didn't she? Yeah. She put some pill in it's his drink. It's a very or similar situation. Yeah. And if it was the other way around, then this guy would, you know. Oh yeah, that, that's it, that's exactly right. If it was the other way trouble. around, oh my gosh, that and like, poor. and um, he would not come back from that. You know, and and certainly I also think that Alia Alia's character, if genders were swapped and and Alia was a was a man and said, well, you were you were you might have been sexually assaulted when you were drunk, you're dumped. That's not acceptable, is it? No, but I think she... Well, she dumped him because she thought that they had done it. And then when, know, Tra- when Daisy said we hadn't, she's like, well... I know, but she she dump- basically dumped him for being... Mm. Um, getting himself in a situation where he could have... Yeah. A- and that's also pretty <laughs> victim-blaming, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It was, a, it was a good talking point for the few weeks that it was on. Yeah. So, um, so Ryan and Daisy, what a better way to begin a relationship than that. So they start <laughs> seeing each other and she's quite impressed because he says he's got this DJing gig in Switzerland and he, she wants him to go, well, he, no, he, he's going to go over there. She wants to go with him. Well, she, she's trying to use this as a springboard for her influencer, mm. um, career. And, uh, but she dumps, she dumps Ryan when she finds out that he's DJing for children. <laughs> now, Swiss children are very sophisticated. They probably eat stinky cheese and charcuterie <laughs> at lunch, so maybe it is similar to, to DJing for adults. Yeah, so uh, yeah, Daisy's like, no, I'm not interested in you. I mean, also, around the same time, and maybe even been in the same episode, that's when she overhears Daniel talking on the phone to her mum, saying, what's that? You've, you've left me a house. And that's Daisy's right. like, ka-ching! Yeah. I think I'm going to set my sights on this guy We've now. honestly never really uncovered whether Daisy it's admits a massive to herself gold digger or not. that she only was interested. Like, has, has Crow forgotten that that is how she first went after him? I know. I think that it has been brought up since. Well, she's she's after him for the, for the cash. Yes. And At first, anyway. Alia finds out from Jenny that Daisy ensnared Ryan before, but she doesn't care. She doesn't want to take him back. Um... Zidane comes back to Weatherfield for one of the many times that Zidane comes back to Weatherfield and Ryan gets accused of mugging him. Mm-hmm. And even Alia thinks that this might have happened. But Zidane says, no, it wasn't him. And he tells Ryan that Alia doesn't hate him. Yes. And Ooh. then 
she goes a bit gooey gooey eyed over him for a few weeks, but nothing nothing happened. Yeah, there was yeah, there was just a bit where she's like, Oh, maybe I should take him back. No, no, no. We had drama for Ryan in Horror Nation Street. You know, some people were getting drama shot. For everyone in Horror Nation some people Street. were falling down holes, some people were drowning, some people were watching their beloved ones drown, some people were heroically rescuing people, but what happened to Ryan was the sound equipment fell in a hole. Yeah. And he said, look, there's a hole. There's a hole here. It's him and Ronnie. They teamed up to announce that there was a hole. And that, <laughs> that, was, that was his contribution to Horror Nation Street. Yeah. Ryan overhears Zidane up to dodgy business when they're doing the money laundering. Oh, that was such <laughs> really Awful convoluted, story, wasn't it? Like. So he, he overhears this uh, money laundering scheme. He finds out. He takes a bag of money out of Zidane's van Speed girl get speed doll gets torched by by the people by who the people the who the money was supposed to go to yeah and then Zidane and Alia after that let Hashim die of a heart He's attack the, the, in the front head of, of the money launderers and, and apparently he's not impressed by this but I, this sounds, seems like par for the course for Ryan mm, just... Ryan should have been like oh what did you phone Ali and because <laughs> I did phone that who? too phone who Ali I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that, that was Ryan I'm so being taken the moral high ground. Because I obviously the, yeah. can't say his name yeah. right anymore. So this takes us then into 2022. Another really slow start to the year for Ryan. Um, Audrey gets a bit tiddly and tells him what a nice young man he is when he comes to the barbers to get his hair cut. That was the Ryan highlight for the start of 2022. Um, we also had him being a little bit jealous when Alia starts flirting with Hunky Matt. Oh, wow. Supplier Hunky Matt. So there's clearly something going he, on there. He doesn't still. give a crap about the fact um, she's been blown up. But then his his one shining moment, if you can call it that, of 2022, is when he got a job at the bistro, and Debbie, the bistro owner at the time, reveals she's massively in debt and convinces him that it would be a really brilliant idea if he helped her stage a break in there so she can claim on the insurance. And, um, all a bit farcical, but I think it was still quite fun to watch. I remember Ryan kind of hiding behind some panelling somewhere in the bistro when Leanne came in and going, oh, what's going on here then? And uh, anyway, he um, he gets caught on CCTV because they forgot to check that when they turned the fuse off that it wasn't actually going to turn the CCTV off. But So he says he was blackmailed into doing it by someone linked to Ray Crosby. He pleads guilty and says, yeah, it was me. I mean, you, you caught me on camera. What can I say? But I was coerced into doing it. He pleads guilty, gets, gets community service, gets fired from the Rovers because Jenny don't want no robbers serving pints to her punters. Um, but then Debbie, to say thanks very much for going along with this and not dropping me in it, gives him a head waiter's position at the bistro, along with accommodation at Chariot Square. So he's been living in a hotel <laughs> for like nine months now, is it? I know, it? but that sounds... That's the highlight. No, no, Even no. Even if it is Chariot Square, which no. has a leaky roof and, and electrified radiators. No, it sounds nice to live in a hotel, but it isn't. Do you reckon? Yeah, it's not. It, you make, you just, it just makes you feel like a transient. Oh. Uh, well, I, guess, I think I don't care. He, he, well, he said he likes bumming around, doesn't he? He's probably in his element. Remember my, you remember my boss Darren? Do, that yes. was his ambition. He wanted to live in a hotel in New York. And it's like these these people who retire onto cruise ships, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think he loves it. Just go back there, bum around, have somebody clean up after you. Yeah. Ordering, got, he probably orders yeah, room live, service for every meal. You live in a meal. bedroom. You live in a bedroom like a teenage I, I boy. And that's what Ryan is. Yeah, that's true. I think this is perfect for him. But it does, as a viewer, seem that like <laughs> do you know where Ryan can live. Let's just shift him over there for a I little bit and believe... hopefully nobody will realise like they did with Izzy because Izzy's yeah. currently living off the, the street, street somewhere. somewhere I can't remember what the name of the road is but she's got she's one of the few people that's got a house somewhere else and um, it's like oh, now we don't have to worry about her for a bit so um, I, I just think that Ryan has been criminally underused really recently not much else happens to him last year he confesses to Alia that he's still into her she says nope you lost your chance I'm into hunky Matt now and um, his final act of note in 2022 was helping Bernie to discover that her vinyl collection was worth £600. If only you'd had that when <laughs> yeah, you owned Yeah, when he <laughs> Gary. Very, very true. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and this year he's obviously been a little bit involved in the in the Damon storyline where he's been a bit of snooping to find out that he's a massive drugs lord in Ibiza. And um, that's about it. And um, I just hope that we're going to see a lot, a lot, lot more of him. Um, because mm. th this character has got so much potential. He's a real I do lovable really like comedy dimwit, but he's not so dimwitted that it's like 
Kirk. No, he's where not. Where now every time Kirk... Criminally over... thick. No, he's not. He, he, uh, neither was Kirk at the beginning, is he? So I do hope that they're careful with Ryan and they don't turn him that far down the I road like into him... single-figure IQ he scores, you know? I like him being a himbo. I, I like that kind of air-headed... There aren't many air-headed guys that mm. are comedic. I think I would say Tyrone used to be more like that. Yes. But yeah, he, he was w- never hunky as a as a lad. He's definitely um spruced up somewhat. Ty- Tyrone then. was Tyrone was funny because he was a bit kind of scrappy doish and thought that he was like well hard when yeah. actually he was a big old softy really. Yeah. He'd like square it to Terry Duckworth and everything and it'd be like, yeah, little little dog snapping at Terry's heels. But uh, yeah, so I, I just I hope that they keep what makes him great the same, but they've just got to give him something to do. Well, I mean, they, they, yeah. he's even had so little to do that, um, and I'm not complaining about this because I think it was great that he did a short film in 2020, didn't he? Um, Dom Stevenson, who um, sometimes does um, directing in Coronation Street um, of, of, of Second AD, I think, um, he had a short film called Chapter 2 Zack. Now, we'd been following Dom Stevenson's chapter series if that's what to call it since the beginning chapter one was a film starring chapter one live chapter one live exactly starred brooke vincent who was sophie webster sally ann matthews who plays jenny really interesting kind of science fictiony thrillery sort of short film we're not you know short film people at all but i was like oh watch this because sally ann matthews is in it really really great and then a couple of years later they had this sequel chapter two zach and um in this um ryan prescott plays the title character of zach who is? I don't want to give the film away. Don't honestly. Give it away. You can you can see it. It's it's around on the internet. It's on Vimeo yeah. or something. And uh, he 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 was he's in it a, with Rob Mallard. Yeah, Rob Mallard. Who, who played was, like a scientist. There was a great scene with Rob yeah. Mallard in a reveal scene with Rob Mallard in that he plays uh, Daniel now. It's really it's honestly, really really good. But it's also left and also of course Adam Blees was in it who yeah. plays Dirk in the Factory. If you like if you like seeing Coronation Street actors in alternate roles yeah this is definitely it's, worth they're, they're like time. what eight they're nine ten minutes, minutes long short film. if you haven't seen these films they're great but it was left on such a cliffhanger and it's now been you know three years since chapter two i need to get in touch with dom and see if he's doing another one because i really really want to find out how this how this continues it's maybe he'll tell us what the idea was yeah like, maybe if he de- if he to... decides that he's not going to make any more dom let us know how it ends in your head please, <laughs> please. um so um, when he did this chapter two, Zach, that's when I got in touch with Ryan Prescott um, and I interviewed him for episode 407 of the podcast. So um, have a listen to that if you're a Ryan Prescott fan. You can find it on our, on our blog or uh, on our YouTube channel. I think if you're listening to this currently on YouTube, we'll try and remember to put a link to it on the end. And uh, yeah, it's great. And I, we also met him face to face last year, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, yeah. you've sure people listening have heard this story but it was oh quite God. funny because uh, we'd just been back from the shop and we bought a load of groceries and, uh, and I had a milkshake and stuff and I was I was drinking it and slurping it away and um, and so then we Ryan saw Prescott Ryan Prescott walking walk, he's like a cool dude walking towards us and I say to Gemma hold my milkshake yeah, <laughs> and then go going in. up to Ryan say hi Ryan do you remember me I interviewed you a few years and ago and he's like I've got to have my hair cut mate, mate. I said, oh yeah, well, yeah, you go. And then, and then the next then day, I got my hair haircut in the same, in the same place. place on as the Ryan. same seat. Yes, I sat. Yes, I've shared bum crevices with Ryan yeah. Prescott. That's my claim to fame. And then we, that was the day that we went to uh, Millie Gibson's leaving party, and Ryan Prescott was there as well. And he's like, "What are you doing here?" Hello. <laughs> but he, oh, he seems like a really, really nice guy, doesn't he? He's a, he's a really decent bloke from what we've seen anyway. I, I, I love talking to him, and, um, and, and he was just him really. In the flesh. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't take. It doesn't take a great deal for us to think you're a nice person. You just got to be kind of pleasant to, to us and an talk ass. to us. But Ryan Prescott, you uh, definitely heard from people that have worked with him that he's a nice, a nice guy. Yeah, 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 definitely. So tell me what he had to say about Ryan taking responsibility you know for the bistro He says, I feel like he's got a good heart and he's not really had the opportunity to show it. Yeah. Weirdly, this might not be, oh, sorry, this might be the opportunity, as scary as it is. Could be a real coming of age moment Aww. for him. Um, no one cares enough to hear his side of the story and he realises in this moment that the family are gone and he's very much alone in this. Oh, so yeah, he, like, like Matt, Pleading guilty the other week, he's also taken responsibility and um, not thrown Debbie under the bus for working with him in this. And um, it's just a shame that you know, yes, it, he he did you know take it like like a man, and um, but nobody cares because he's not been in the show for anybody to care about him. Um, I Do think you... generally people like him, and I think the characters he's like likeable. him. He just does his 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 roots on the show now that the Connors have upped and left are you know, paper thin, aren't they? His only real 
linked to the anyone else on the street now is Alia. I think so, because even Debbie's kind of declined De- Debbie's, in appearances. Yeah, but but even then, like, we didn't see that much of Debbie and, and Ryan his... together. They were a great team for that storyline last summer. And there was also, do you remember people talking about, oh, could this, you know, th- could there be a, a cougar kind of story with, with Debbie and Ryan? And, but yeah. I think they even put in the in the dialogue of the show her saying, oh, I'm not your Mrs. Robinson. And yes. I don't think I want it to go down that road, to no. be honest. But I, I did think that they were really good together. So, yeah, Alia's all that's left. And sadly, you know, we're not massive Alia fans. But even she's had a lot to do recently. You know, what with, you know, getting blown up one minute and getting stabbed the next. And um, and where's Ryan been to be part of that? I just, I just don't feel that their relationship, even though they were together for a little bit, it was it completely left me cold because we didn't see any of it again. They got together, and then we would just so, had to believe. Oh, okay, they're suited to each other. But do you think that? Um, do you think that he's still working at the bistro? Yeah, yeah, he's well, still, because yeah, he's Debbie's working. left. No, he is. We saw him. Yeah, on Monday he was there interviewing, uh, being interviewed by the police, wasn't he? About the the the, the bang banging, the, the 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 gun siege. Okay, so he's definitely still right. there. And, and do you think that he and Ali are going to get back together? It seems, I just it say, seems like... Punky Matt has dumped her like a sack of bricks after he took her away. Yeah. He whirled her off to his supplier trip. And uh, now she's been bombed and stabbed. He's nowhere to be seen. Yeah, that's... Yeah. You'd think that he would... Do you think that Ryan would slide back in there, wouldn't you? Yeah. Hey, I do. Like... I, I just don't want it. You don't want it, them to be together? No. I actually it's, don't mind. I actually don't mind. A lot of people mind. didn't mind, but I don't know whether there were yeah, many listen, people that were super passionate about them. I think that they... Are, the best relationships on Coronation Street are the chalk and cheese ones. Mm. Corey, Corey's done far too many like-minded individuals getting together because it seems inevitable. And I'm, you know, I'm thinking of lots of lots of different couples where they just seem very similar to each other. So it's like, oh yeah, they would definitely date. But they're not the interesting ones, are they? The interesting ones are the ones that don't really get along that well. Like Tim and Sally. You know, yeah. she's she's like posh bird and he's a bit rough. And Jack and Vera, you know. Yeah. There's lots... And I think that Ryan, uh, Ryan and um, Alia could be really good together because um, she's ambitious and hardworking and he is rather just have a, a comfy life. Well, that that is, the, you know, the archetypical Coronation Street relationship isn't it the 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 layabout the, fella and the and the hard working despairing uh, wife the biggest problem would with that would be though is i can see alia just turning into a, a miserable nag <laughs> she's already one i know but i don't want that to, to happen um i want to like everyone on the sh- on the street I, could it be funny or would it be with, with the nag with the nagging wife the best nagging wives on coronation street and i'm marrying alia and ryan off already as you can see um you're often as a viewer thinking yeah he is a massive layabout isn't he you you go hilda you you tell him vera yeah, that's true. With, but with with alia i just don't know whether she could get that much support no because it feels it would, you would feel like leave him alone yeah that just wants to relax yeah and and i just i and just also what you're doing is not that impressive alia well, you know, she's working very hard in that the bistro. Last time the I moment. saw, she don't work in the bistro anymore. She doesn't work in the bistro. She worked in Speed Dial. Oh yeah, that's right. Sorry, and sorry, now I mean. she doesn't work there. She works for Dee Dee. Yeah. Well, she's apparently. done nothing. Yeah, but she's very good at it. Apparently, she's but... really brilliant. Yeah, I, I mean, is there anybody else apart from Alia that you could see Ryan pairing off with? Like, Ooh, good question. I might think, you know, other, other ladies. Would he be better off with Daisy? Not that I want to split Daisy no. and Daniel up. No. You don't reckon, You don't think so? No, I can't see that happening. What about like... She's also too ambitious for him. Yeah, Sarah Louise maybe. If if you know, if she were to split up with Adam, I could potentially see them together. Although I you think know, Sarah would probably get a bit annoyed at him as well. I say bring back uh, Dr. Ali. Uh, see? No, Ali. that's not... And... Uh, Get them together. No, I don't think well, so. Well, I'm looking up here. What about, and... like, what about Dee Dee? Because if Ali is working for Dee Dee at the moment, he could be like, he's got his reason to go up to the lawyer's office. Maybe Dee Dee's there alone one night. One thing work leads to another. They could be <laughs> quite fun together because she's also like, her thing is that she's a bit scatty, isn't she? And he's, 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 she, well, he is also, you know, a bit of a, a bit of a ditz. 
and that could work well together. But the difference is that she's you know, massively successful, and actually, she she has got her head screwed on, and he hasn't. I think I think that those two could be mm. quite fun together. It's not actually Toya. To- Toya. Toya's a. F- Toya is a free well, agent at the she's moment. Getting, no, she's dating. Spider. Oh no, of course. Sorry, Spider. I totally forgot about that. But, That's what happens when you're not in the show for two months. How long is Spider going to be in the show? Yes. Okay. So maybe if Spider leaves, I, I don't think that. You know, I think that going to Ryan after Imran would be a bit of a come down. I mean, Spider's there because it's he's like you know, reminder of 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 young young yeah. love and everything. I think but I think I that think. Toya would be um, no Toya and Ryan right they're same, similar age. I think that that would that would work out. Um, I don't I don't I'm not that. Or if not, there's I mean, there's hardly anyone else. So what, I'm like, what, we're always bringing somebody new for but him. There's then. too many characters but you can see why it's so tempting to just keep adding new ones because yeah. um there's so many of them that are that are tied up what about if um i just like someone that can, Sarah can have... split up and she, he could date yeah yeah no i said that i suggested oh, that I... I wonder i well you're not listening to me just sorry of, yeah, I'm, not listening. I'm I, looking at the, at the i know the you list. are you've got your coronation to your website ruby's there in front too of you. young I'm yes i'm gonna right say now. that's not gonna happen um i mean i, I particularly <laughs> like ryan like when he was doing that that comedy caper with Ali. So give him someone who can go and have capers with. Because there isn't anyone else like that. Why but it's got to stay romance? funny. Not like not like Mary, who gets at the capers and it just is like chalk, oh, right. Sometimes it down does. chalkboard. Listen. Bromance, how, yes. How about maybe let's rehabilitate Kirk and put Kirk and Ryan together? No. As, as, as comedy chums. I, I I think Kirk has gone too far. Set I don't them think up he's with their business again. together. I think I think if he's going to a bromance up with anybody, it's Michael. And I and ah. as soon as, as soon as the Baileys came in, I was saying Michael and Ryan really feel like that they could be good, be yes, a great you're double right. act. They would be fantastic. Okay, right. So this is our idea. This is our pitch. Ryan starts dating Dee Dee. Yes. And then he becomes very good friends with Michael because he's always around the Bailey's house. Mm. And then Michael and Ryan uh, decide to go into business together, doing another side business, because he buys Sarah out with his £10,000 he's forgotten he had. Nice. And so he and um, he and Michael have a business. Because honestly... I, I think that him and Michael are massively wasted potential. They seem perfect for each other. Yeah. I'm just playing romance Cupid here. You want them to be a gay couple? No. Friends. You said ro- oh, I thought They're you said, said bromance Cupid. Cupid. Yeah, I, I think it. I think that'd be. Do you think that? I, I, I'm just worried. <laughs> I don't, and I can I can't remember how old he is now. Early thirties, let's say, late twenties. Thirty-four. Thirty-four is he? Okay. He's got to grow up. There's only no, so long I'm not that this to. kind of doofer sort of character can work because Kirk is now forty. Is he? And his dumb act doesn't wash anymore. And eventually, Ryan's going to also be 40. He'll be 45. He'll be 50. And he can't just be the same. Or can he? Can he just be like an old rocker or something? Well, think about Vernon. Vernon was always a bit of a hapless fool. Oh, yeah. Vernon Tomlin. He never grew up. Yeah, maybe maybe you would be like that actually. I can imagine him just like so the, still like you know the age of fifty, still going. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go to Ibiza. I'm gonna really break into the DJ in this yeah. time. I really think. Or maybe they're going to like make him a bit cringier, like they have with Dev now that he's he's cringy <laughs> dad because Adi and Asher are of the right age to get embarrassed about that sort of thing. Maybe that's where they'll go with well, Ryan. But Ryan doesn't have any kids to embarrass. Well, this is the thing, you know. Does Ryan have a kid? Is this the story? Is this a pitch we can make? Could be. Ryan had a few fumbles in Ibiza, I'm sure. Yeah. And so what if it turned it up a bit like Kylie, where she turns up from... Was it Ibiza? She was a remember. cage dancer yeah, who um, married David... Or yeah. did they just start dating? I can't remember. No, they married on the show because and they had that double wedding with Graham and Sheen, didn't they? But she turned up as like his fiance yeah. or girlfriend yeah, or yeah. something. Fiance, I think. Why not have a little yeah, a new character come into the show? It's Ryan's ex from Arbitha and his kid who he had mind you, we're always moaning that people have kids and it ruins the character. Yeah, but having I'd quite like Wouldn't to see that Ryan, make him grow Ryan up? <laughs> having a child, you know, it doesn't have to be a baby. No, not no, exactly. that. no, I'm not saying Have that. Have a either. child drop onto him. Like I mean, like Peter did when Simon came oh, into yeah. the show. He was what five then, didn't so he didn't have to go so through well all the baby. Simon, did it? No, not so much. 
But um, yeah, seeing Ryan suddenly having to grow up and take responsibility, this man who's bummed around the last 35 years of his life, that could be really interesting. And it might make Alia see, oh, well, actually, this guy can be mature. This kid could be like, you know, when did he go off to it? I can't can't work it out. But, um, you know, this kid could be eight. Yeah. It could be... Yeah, definitely. There we, we've got so many storyline pictures from Ryan. Come on, some some writers, listen to us. Give him something to do. Because I worry that if he's not careful, then oh. he could end up just being the next victim of Stephen Reed. He could be like the Luke victim of Ryan, of, of, um, of Phelan, which was a character that nobody felt that strongly about, but he was kind of nice. They kind of liked him. And so Phelan, when he killed him, it was like, oh no, I was Here's... just kind of getting to like him. And I think that'd be the same with Ryan if, if Stephen was to clonk him on the head. Here's my alternate pitch for the bromance between him and Michael. What if a girl turns up who has a baby, who's Ryan's baby, same age as um, Glory? Yeah. And then they co-dad <gasps> and they swap tips. And that would actually oh, be really gosh. empowering for, for single dads. Yeah. Because there's not, I don't think there's a massive amount of, um, what's the word, representation. Mm. And it, I think it'd be really nice to see these two really quite charismatic guys these actors yeah modeling like yeah being a dad is and, and daniel as well yeah they could have the, they could be the lonely dad's club yeah <laughs> literally these these write themselves i oh, mean i tell you oh sorry I, i'm just enamored of this idea the the little the dad's club on cory that yeah. would be the, the we talked about sorry how... chesney you're not allowed it this is the cool dads yeah the cool dad's club <laughs> sorry Ches. but yeah why not have a dad's club because that would be so empowering and it would also um, boost the, the male characters a bit more because mm. Corey's always been about strong women. We know that, but why not? Yeah. Why not? Why not talk about? I like this. Dads and oh, I like. I would maybe really like maybe that. this year is Ryan's year. You, you know, some some characters do have massive droughts, don't they? And then they have something big like Nina was barely in it last year after the huge Seb storyline. Abby's going through a massive drought at the moment. Ryan's drought does seem to be a lot longer than lots of other characters oh. but you never know when some characters get plonked into the forefront of the year like um shelly king Yasmin, went what five years or so before the jeff storyline came along and she was a bit of a, yeah, it's been a nothing that character Ryan, that though. i enjoyed but was and i was like oh come on they gotta give gotta give Yasmin something to do and i remember meeting shelly king up in manchester one time and saying oh shelly when are they gonna give you stuff and she's like oh there's something coming up there's something in the pipeline and then we had the jeff story so i am saying now come on when are they gonna give just... ryan connor who i love now and 10 years ago if you were to play me a clip saying i love ryan connor i thought what on earth what transformation has happened there but Honestly, he is, he is a really great guy. Ryan Prescott plays him so well. And uh, yeah, really so much potential. I, I hope that they don't just squander it. I, I just, yeah, I just have this really strong image in my mind now of a dad, you know, like a little... Uh, and instead of like, you know, do you remember the Alcoholics Anonymous meeting where everybody came along with um, Peter? No, I have never heard of that Coronation Street clip. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Hashtag funniest coronation street scene ever. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> but I'm imagining that, but it's just those, like, you know, Michael, Daniel, Chesney, Ryan. Yeah. And they're all just there together having a chat and, like, being like, well, look, we've never really talked to each other, have we? Yeah, we, we don't really know each other, but... And then, and then they kind of sit there in silence and they don't really know what to say until one of them says something and they all relate to it. And then mm. they start swapping stories and advice and things. I just but think it would be really heartwarming. Get get Evelyn into that. I mean, the, the, the AA story was a, was a blanche scene above all, wasn't it? <laughs> well, so having be, Evelyn... Okay, Evelyn is in trouble, right? She's got, um, what's it called? Community service for stealing scarves from the charity <laughs> shop. <laughs> yeah. So she's been enlisted to help chair a parents meeting right for for um for parents who are struggling and she decides that's a good idea because she just wants to judge people for being terrible parents mm. and like she was and um <laughs> then she, they, these are the only people that turn up and she's like oh god i've got a right bunch of idiots here are we gonna sort this one out yeah and then they could have like a regular thing yeah i love it i love it <laughs> come on curry it's a it it's a us. lot it's a lot to introduce two new characters just so we can have a scene with ryan being a dad for one Mm. one episode but i think we should do it well let's come back to this in 10 years time yeah okay we'll that's going to be our kind of our schedule for revisiting characters and then we'll, we'll see what happens i suppose <laughs> um so cory the ball's in your court 
that is it for um, today's episode. Thank you everybody for listening. I very much enjoyed talking about Ryan there. Great character, uh, great actor. And um, yeah, yeah, we want lots of lots of potential. We give you some ideas. Now you come up with your own, Corey. Yeah. Let's see what you You've got think. your own storyline pictures for Ryan. Email us at conversationstream <laughs> at gmail.com or leave some comments if you're watching this on YouTube in the comments oh, yeah, below. Yeah, please and don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you like Ryan, like the video, etc, etc. Right, um... Thank you, everybody. We are off because because it's Wednesday night when we're recording this and Corey's on in 20 minutes. We need to get ready. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And uh, we'll see you at the weekend for more Conversation Street larks. Ta-ra. Au revoir.